Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There's a post on Mathematics Stack Exchange that really got me worked up. Apparently, sometimes one half is less than one fourth. My son brought this home today from his third grade class. It is from an official Montgomery County, Maryland mathematics assessment test. The exercise is relatively simple. True or false? Circle your answer. One half is always greater than one fourth. True or false are the two choices. The son answered true. Then, prove your answer with drawings and an explanation. So here's what the son did. He drew a circle and divided it right down the middle and shaded one part to illustrate one half of the circle. He drew another circle of the same size and divided it into four equal pieces and shaded one of the four pieces to represent one fourth. So this would be a satisfactory explanation to me, but the teacher said the answer was wrong. It is not always true that one half is greater than one over fourth, and the explanation was marked wrong. Here's what the teacher wrote. The teacher drew a sketch of a very small circle and divided it down the middle into two pieces, and then drew a picture of a very large circle and divided it into four pieces, and the teacher has written the comment, What about this? Okay, so whose side are you on? The student's side or the teacher's side? Some of the commenters wondered whether the context of the question mattered. So the parent actually uploaded other parts of the exercise, and it was just a one-page assessment, and on the front, it was just regular questions about comparing fractions on a number line. It had nothing to do with what size you were taking the fractions of. It was just a numerical exercise. You have fractions, you need to put them on a number line, you need to write them in order from least to greatest. So it would seem really strange when you're just comparing fractions to then think about what the fractions are a part of. Sometimes it can feel like the teacher is just out to get you. This problem reminded me of another problem that went viral. Here's another question. So Marty ate 4 sixths of his pizza and Louis ate 5 sixths of his pizza. Marty ate more pizza than Lewis. How is that possible? In this exercise, the student wrote, Marty's pizza is bigger than Lewis's pizza, so that's how he ate more pizza, even though he ate four six of his pizza and Lewis ate five six of his pizza. Once again, the teacher marked this as wrong and said that is not possible because five over six is greater than four over six, so Lewis ate more. Marty's pizza problem went viral, and it was even the source of many memes where people were showing what Marty's pizza could be like. But these two questions could leave a student naturally frustrated. What is a student supposed to do? Do you consider fractions as numbers on their own to be compared, or do you consider them parts of a whole? I would say that in the question, as stated, this student was absolutely correct. One half is always greater than one fourth when you're just comparing the numbers, and this is a very satisfactory explanation. This may be a good time as any, just to highlight how much Americans struggle with fractions. So here's a question that Scientific American covered a few years ago. 12 over 13 plus 7 over 8 is closest to which whole number? You don't need to calculate the answer, you just need to approximate. The answer choices are A1, B2, C19, and D21. Any student that understands fractions would know that this expression is closest to approximately 1 plus 1, and the correct answer is B2. But what are the actual results? A study in 1978 found a success rate of only 24%. Less than 1 in 4 students was solving this. But surely, with everything that's gone on in the education world, all the advancements, we would have more success later. Not at all. In 2014, the success rate was only 27%. So as highlighted by a couple of researchers, despite more than three decades, 
numerous rounds of education reforms, hundreds if not thousands of research studies on mathematics teaching and learning, and billions of dollars spent to affect educational change, little improvement was evident in students' understanding of fraction arithmetic. So I think it's important to understand just how poor students are and how bad the general public is at fractions. So just to end this video, I want to give more explanation of why one half is greater than one fourth. You could imagine this was actually a very important exercise in ancient times. So one of the ways they did this was by considering a common denominator. We have one half and let's make it a fraction over four. We can multiply this by two over two. Two over two is equal to one, so it's fine to multiply a number by one. This is equal to two over four. And of course, two parts over four are greater than one part over four. So we have the inequality that one half is greater than one fourth. Another method is to use the decimal representation. One half is equal to five parts out of 10 which can be represented as 0.5. One over four can be represented as 25 over 100, which is equal to 0.25. Now we look at the first number after the decimal point and we have five versus two, five is greater than two. So of course, one half is greater than one fourth. Another method that has been used since ancient times is cross multiplication. So we have one over two and one over four. Take the denominator of one over four and multiply it by the numerator of one over two. So we have four times one, which is equal to four. Then do the cross multiplication. So we have the denominator two multiplied by the numerator one, which is equal to two. Now, of course, four is greater than two and this sign will continue to the original numbers. So we have one over two is greater than one over four. Another way is by considering addition. One over four plus one over four is of course equal to two over four, which equals one over two, and therefore one half is greater than one over four. We can also do this by multiplication. We take one over four and multiply it by two to get one over two. We need to scale the number one fourth up. We need to multiply it by a number that's greater than one and therefore one over two is greater than one over four. So in conclusion, I am siding unequivocally with the student on this one. I do think the student gave the correct answer, but maybe I missed something. I would love to hear your comments and perspective on this story. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.